Okay. I'm here at AlexCon with artist William O'Connor. Uh, thank you for speaking with me. Thank you. Um, I'd like to start by asking, is there an artwork here you're most proud of and why? Hmm. Good question. I would have to say um, Dragon Spell right now. Okay. It's my most recent painting. Okay. Um, I, I'm proud of it because it's a, it's a personal piece that I did. Um, Completely a la prima. There was no preliminary drawing. There was no. Uh, I did a brief color study, mm -hmm. but it was directly onto the canvas with a brush and oil. Um, and I really enjoy working that way. It's like doing impromptu music. Oh, okay. You know, like playing jazz. Okay. You know, there, there's no score. There's no plan. You just you just dive in, mm -hmm. and it becomes what it's going to become. Okay. So I really enjoy that. Did you have some? false starts and do it again? Of, of course, oh, of course. Okay. Um, not not completely, but yeah. Um, if you take a look at my um, my blog, I actually posted some of the some of the uh, the work in progress stages. Oh. And you can see, you know, some of the very very early stages of me sketching with the paint and wiping it out and sketching again. So okay. it took a little while, and the figure changed about three or four times oh, yeah. before I was happy with it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it looks great. Um, how do you know when a work is finished? Ah, good <laughs> question. Excellent. Um, I had a teacher when I was a kid, and he used to. Uh, I worked. I, I, I used to study in this academy, mm -hmm. and he was this old German painter, and he was very strict. And we would we would work on our painting, and then we'd say, "Okay, I'm done." And he would come over and say, "You're not done." Oh. And you'd keep working, and you'd keep working, and keep working. A couple days later, you'd say, okay, now I'm done. He'd say, nope, you're not done. And then in the middle, you'd be working and working. He'd come over, and he'd take the brush out of your hand, and he'd say, you're done. Wow. And after a while, we used to get frustrated. Like, what are you, how do you know when I'm done? And he would say, when you're done learning all that you can learn from this painting, you're done. Wow. And that's the rule I've always tried to stick with. If I stop learning, and you're just going over old, retreaded stuff... Huh. You're done. The painting's finished. Otherwise, you're just... So, every painting is a learning process. When you're done learning from that painting, mm -hmm. it's finished. Move on to the next one. That's an amazing lesson. So, uh, that's what I always learned. Now, uh, art directors would often disagree with you uh -huh. and say, you're not done. <laughs> but, as a general rule, once it stops being challenging, you get to that point where you're like, okay, now I'm just noodling. You know, it's just, there's nothing more to do. You're done. Walk away. Okay. Huh. So, what inspires you, um, or what it, what inspired this piece? You sort of alluded to it being personal. Yeah, just a personal piece. I like, I love color. I love atmosphere. I love tone. I love smearing paint on canvases. Mm -hmm. It's just a visceral. Like I said, it's kind of like jazz. Mm -hmm. I love just the process of it. Yeah. You know, um, I love the making of paintings, mm -hmm. and that's what I enjoy. So that's what inspires me is putting paint down. Okay. And um, that's what pushes me to do the next painting, is the opportunity to, to push more paint, oh, okay. make more music. Okay, cool, <laughs> cool. Um, what is your most important artist tool? Is there something you can't live without in your studio? The pencil. Pencil? Just any pencil. Number two pencil. Okay. With a number two pencil, you can do anything. Huh. You okay. can communicate any idea, you can envision anything with an overdue pencil. It's the only deal that you really can't live without. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Now you said with this piece you didn't you didn't no, really start with No, anything. but if if, if if sort of a desert island question. Yeah. You know, I would have to say a pencil. Okay. You know? All right. An endless pencil. Endless <laughs> yeah, if you're on a desert island, definitely. <laughs> um, is there an element of art you enjoy working with most and why? Yeah, composition. Composition. Form, composition, design. Yeah. Okay. That's what I like the most. Um, you know, I, I I came from a from a conceptual art background, not from an illustration background. Okay. So um, I like form. I like abstract art. Mm -hmm. um, I was an abstract artist before I was an illustrator. Really? Yeah. So that's how I was trained. I got into illustration because I needed the money, oh. and I started taking work. Okay. But every painting that I, the part of the painting that I enjoy the most is the abstract design element huh. and the composition. I was going to say your pieces are very. There, there's a lot of detail, but then there's also it, it has that. It's not so detailed that you think it's just a, a, a copy of something. Right, right, right. Sure, you know, sure. It's, uh, so I'm always I'm always striving for for strong design. Right. Um, how did you start making art, and why do you make art? 
mm. kind of kind of disgusting. Yeah, already. yeah. I started when I was a child. Mm-hmm. I started drawing and painting as a kid. Mm-hmm. I took I joined an academy mm-hmm. when I was ten. Painted right through high school. Got an art scholarship. Went to college. Mm-hmm. Studied fine art painting. Okay. Um, and then, like I said, I got out of college and um, I needed to make some money, so I developed an illustration portfolio. Okay. Started getting work, and yeah. then that snowballed, and I became an illustrator. Okay. Um, but I just. I love building worlds, making things that didn't exist before. Oh, okay. That, I think, was the childhood um, joy of it, mm-hmm. was a blank piece of paper and a number two pencil, and I could build castles and dragons and monsters and universes that didn't exist. Yeah. And I think that's the that's the, the perennial enjoyment of it that, that keeps me going. Yeah. So would you say you create a world in one piece, or have you done like sort of a series of pieces around an idea? As I've gotten older, I've, I've developed a series. My Dracopedia series is a series of books okay. about a, a, a world, a universe, a world where dragons are real, mm-hmm. dragons in our world. Um, so I've built three, four books now, mm-hmm. developing and outlining and creating a universe full of dragons. Okay. And that's been really a much bigger project than I ever imagined. Oh, you know, really? that, that I built four books full of dragons and mm-hmm. stories and tales and history. Yeah. And that's been a real joy. And is it continuing? It's still going. Yeah, the next one's coming out next month. Okay. Uh, not next month, next spring. Next spring. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, why the love of dragons? How did that. Oh, well, what's not to love about dragons? Oh, I agree. I agree. But... Um, they're powerful, they're beautiful, they're ancient, yeah. um, they're graceful. Mm-hmm. Um, they're everything that you could look for in, in something you would want to paint, you know, it's everything about them, color, texture, form, everything. What I like is dragons can actually take so many different variations. Oh, sure. It's an endless, endless variety. Every culture has a different take on them. Yeah. Every artist has a different take on them. Yeah. So, yeah, it's an endless, an endless uh, source of inspiration. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what role does the artist have in society? Interesting. Um, ideally, I believe the artist is there to reflect the society that he lives in. Mm-hmm. Um, I think all the great art in art history, that's what it does, whether it's Renaissance art or abstract art. It, it, it's All art is contemporary art. Mm-hmm. All art is modern art. Right. So, you know, uh, Leonardo da Vinci was painting in the... 15th and 16th, you know, 15th century, he's a Renaissance artist. You can't take Leonardo da Vinci and put him in the 21st century; it wouldn't work. Right. He's not a 21st century person. Right. You know, so only 21st century people can make 21st century art. Only 15th century people can make 15th century art. So all art is modern. Yeah. It's all done by modern people, reflecting the times in which they live. Mm-hmm. So the, what makes great art, and probably the role of the artist, is to reflect the time in which they live. Mm-hmm. And to not be anachronistic, right? Um, to understand that you are a modern person living in the 21st century. It's your job to try to reflect that. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily your job, but your work is going to reflect that, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you're you're speaking to future generations almost by letting them know whether you want, whether you are intending to or not. Yeah. Your work will be seen in the in the context of which the time it was made. Yeah. So I will always be a 21st century painter. 200 years from now, when people find my paintings, yeah. they'll say, well, William O'Connor, you know, he was a 21st century dragon painter, and we have to understand his paintings in that context. Right. You know? Yeah. Cool. Um, okay, what movies, books, or other artwork in oh. science fiction or fantasy have inspired you? Oh, uh, everything. Um, as a child, probably Star Wars and Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Um, contemporarily. Um, Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. um, Game of Thrones, um, yeah, the biggies, Harry yeah. Potter, my yeah. children love Harry Potter, okay. I loved Harry Potter, Yeah, I love the magic of it, the mystery, the, the, the childish wonder, mm-hmm. you know, that's really enjoyable, mm-hmm. so, yeah. You feel like it's uh, more books or the movies that you, right now, that you're getting? Right now, it's probably movies. I've never been a video game player, okay. so that's never been an influence of mine. I've never read comic books, so that was oh. never an influence of mine. Interesting. Um, just never cared for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but fiction, I started reading fiction in like junior high, you know, okay. Lord of the Rings and other things. Right. And then now movies have gotten so good. Fantasy movies 
have gotten fantastic in the past 20 years. Oh yeah. You know, so that's a big influence aesthetically. Mm -hmm. You know, looking at costumes and set design and things like oh, yeah. that. Really beautiful. Yeah. So I kind of noticed. Um, so that picture, that's a little different from the rest. Yes, it is. That's Canadian actually for a new story that I'm writing. Oh. Okay. Um, about a uh, a Canadian aviator. Okay. Who who flies? Um, again, it's built it's built into my universe, my Dracopedia universe. Oh. Okay. Where if dragons were real, what role would they have played in history? Right. So this is a Canadian aviator who flies dragons in World War One. Oh, okay. And the name of the, it's Lieutenant. Sam. Lieutenant Sam Averill is the character's name. Okay. Cool. And that's going to be, I guess, an illustration in the book? It's a conceptual development piece for oh, okay. myself. I'm writing the story, so I like to develop works of, you know, little key, key pieces of art so I can inspire myself. So I know what the character looks like. Yeah. Give me flavor, you know, and a visual inspiration. Right. So that I know what color her eyes are, I know what her costume looks like, so I can describe it in the text. Right. You know? Yeah. So how long does a piece like that take? Oh, that was just a few hours. That was a sketch. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. And the colors, too, getting the colors in it? Um, that's just uh, umber washes and whatnot. Oh. There's, there's not much to it. If, you, if you're getting close, it's, really, it's just underpainting. Oh. It's just a sketch. The only part that's really painted is the face. Everything else is just sketch. Oh, wow. Cool. All right. Um, is there an art piece you'd like to create that you haven't done so yet, and what is it? Architecture. Architecture? I would love to design a building. Oh, okay. All right. What kind? Never happen. I don't know. Library? Oh, okay. <laughs> something fancy or... Oh, yeah. That'd be fun. Okay. Music hall, museum, library, something like that. Oh, wow. That would be so cool to design a building. Yeah. But that'll never happen. Oh. More realistically, I don't know. I've, I've, I've fulfilled everything beyond my wildest dreams. I've got books and paintings and drawings and games and video games. and Yeah. I never thought that would happen. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean... I'm pretty happy with what I'm doing. Uh, I mean, but yeah, that the sort of like crazy dream would be a building. That would be. You could sketch buildings. I do. I sketch buildings a lot. Yeah. I love designing buildings, but it would be fun to see one of my things actually fleshed out and yeah. made real. That would be cool. Wow. Yeah. Really huh. Something really fantastic, maybe. Or no, no. Like simple? I said, I studied modernism. Oh, okay. I was a modern art student. Oh, okay. I got into illustration later, so I, I love the fantasy elements, but I would probably. You know, it'd be more contemporary designs. Okay. I like contemporary architecture. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, it would be really cool. What's Library. your favorite period, architectural period? Do you have one? Because I like architecture too. So right now, I, uh, probably mid-century. Right now, I'm, I'm a big mid-century fan. You know, Frank Lloyd Wright and Mies van der Rohe. Okay. And it was big. You know, blocky, abstract. Yeah. You know, they're just abstract sculptures yeah. that you can live in. Yeah. So I, I think that's cool. Um, maybe with a little bit more, you know, a little more flair, a little more oh, postmodern okay. decoration. You know, oh, okay. Some arches and some huh. some cool shapes. Okay. All right. Well, uh, that's all the questions I had. Thank yeah. you very much. Anything? Last words? No. no? Okay. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. That Thank was you. enjoyable. Yeah, okay. Please visit chrisalvarez.com for more cool stuff. That's C R I S A L V A R E Z. Dot com. Thanks for listening and keep imagining the future.